welcome to another exciting episode of Nits in Apps podcast series. I'm your host, Hethvi Shah. And today we are diving into the cutting edge world of surgical oncology. Over the past decade, surgical techniques and technology has revolutionized cancer treatment, improving precision, recovery and outcomes. And to guide us through these advancements, we have an expert in the field, Dr. Jitendra Rohila. With over a decade of experience, Dr. Rohila specializes in GI oncology, robotic and laparoscopic surgeries, and complex sur- procedures like HIPAC for per- peritoneal cancers. He has trained at some of the most prestigious institutions, including Ames, Tata Memorial Center, and Safi Hospital. So, Doctor, it is an absolute pleasure to have you here, and welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Hithi. Thank you for having me here, and it's an uh, privilege to be on your podcast. Thank you, Doctor. Likewise, so, Doctor, before we start uh, by talking about uh, surgical oncology, would you just uh, give, provide an overview of your professional journey to us? Uh, so, I'm basically a surgical oncologist. Surgical oncologist means cancer surgeon. The a uh, doctor who specializes in surgical treatment of cancers so i did my uh, graduation from uh, pgm ms rotak it's in hana uh, then i moved to uh, aims new delhi for my post graduation which is master in surgery uh, and then for super specialization i was in tata memorial hospital mumbai which is the best uh, center for cancer Sir, treating my MCH, I specialize specifically in GI cancers, which is gastrointestinal or digestive system cancers, where I was uh, trained to the latest techniques for uh, doing uh, these type of cancers, namely robotic surgery, hypex surgery, and all other advanced treatment. So I got that, and now currently I am with uh, Fortis Group of Hospitals. It's a dedicated uh, Fortis Cancer Institute in Mohali, Punjab. Yeah, that's a uh, and uh, good and inspiring story, doctor. Now, uh, to start with, you know, surgical uh, oncology has evolved significantly over the past decade. So, what are some of the most uh, impactful advances that have transformed patient outcome? So, surgical oncology initially started as an extension of general surgery, right? Uh, surgeons, general surgeons who were trained in doing cancer surgeries were doing surgical oncology, but now it has specialized more. there are there is mch program which is a super specialty program which uh, we get trained into surgical oncology programs and then now after advancement from the last one decade we are moving toward organ specific uh, surgical oncology which means that a particular surgeon who is trained in performing cancer surgery will deal with a particular type of organ system like a breast cancer surgeon head and neck cancer surgeon gastrointestinal cancer surgeon gynae cancer surgeon and musculoskeletal or bone cancer surgeon so we have specialized into that era first is this one second from my field if we talk about uh, gi cancers we have evolved a lot uh, initially you must have heard that all surgeries all being performed with open technique but now we are moving toward minimal invasive techniques uh, which is doing the same surgery with smaller holes so that patient can have better recovery in the post operative period in the minimally invasive surgery the latest technique is doing robotic surgery we'll discuss about that in uh, the podcast and we have progressed in stage 4 cancer treatment also uh, there has been advancement in medical oncology side the chemotherapies immunotherapies they have progressed from the surgery side also in stage 4 cancer we have been able to offer them cytoreductive surgery hypex surgery pipex surgery and these are some of the advances in my field and similarly there are advances in other fields also of surgical oncology so it has evolved a lot in the past uh, decade or so yeah i think that's very fascinating and i think integration of minimally invasive uh, techniques has actually reshaped also oncology care now after speaking of innovations only like hypex that you mentioned it has gained a lot of attention for treating peritoneal uh, malignancies so can you walk us through the latest evidence uh, supporting its role in gi cancers so uh, first of all i will tell you what is hypex surgery it is basically a method of administering chemotherapy inside the abdomen so it is called hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy so it is a device surgical treatment device for stage 4 cancers which are only limited to peritoneum what is peritoneum peritoneum is a inner lining which will line your internal organs so uh, 
in your abdomen there is a layer called peritoneum which will protect all these organs suppose the cancer goes there it is called a stage 4 cancer so but it if it's very limited disease then we can do a surgery in them which is called cytoreductive surgery cytoreductive surgery means the surgeon goes inside whatever disease is seen or visible to him he will remove all that that is called cytoreductive surgery after ensuring cytoreductive surgery he will put the chemotherapy inside keep it for 90 minutes or so and then close up the patient so it is administration of chemotherapy at the time of surgery after doing a complete cytoreductive surgery what cancers it can be used in in if we talk about gi or digestive system cancers there is colon cancer stomach cancer and if you talk about gynec cancer ovarian cancer the uh, the ovary cancer is there so in ovary cancer it can be used and there are some cancer which will originate from the peritoneum those are very rare but if we can diagnose them which is called as pseudomyxoma peritoneum it was initially called as jelly belly like th there is a lot of jelly like material which gets filled in the abdomen and patients become very symptomatic there have huge abdominal distensions the historical treatment was repeated evacuation of mucin but now we can give, give them cytoreductive surgery and, and hyper pseudomyxoma peritoneum is the only cancer we will talk about survival in terms of 10 years 15 years no other cancer will talk about that we only talk about cancer survival in terms of 5 year what is the 5 year survival so pseudomyxoma if it is done by a well trained surgeon is good cytoreduction and hypex will give them a very very good survival similarly peritoneal mesothelioma there are rare diagnosis they are usually treated as abdominal tuberculosis but when once someone does a Uh, laparoscopy or a biopsy then we find them in mesothelioma if it's a low grade mesothelioma then also it's a gold standard in ovarian cancer now we have the level 1 evidence to suggest that after giving chemotherapy in stage 3 or stage 4 ovarian cancer if we do crs and hypex these patients tend to have a better survival outcomes so these are the disease uh, set of uh, where we uh, can offer them cytoreductive surgery and hypex and a lot of research is ongoing right now we in future we will find very good evidence for colorectal stomach cancer also and i am very hopeful that we will be able to give meaningful survival to this stage 4 peritoneal limited cancers also yeah i think that is a game changer also doctor and thank you for sharing that incredible insight uh now alongside hypex as you also mentioned earlier like robotic surgery has been making waves in gi cancer treatment so how has robotic surgery improved precision patient recovery and long term oncological out outcomes in uh, gi cancer cases so as i have mentioned uh, earlier in my introduction also so robotic robotic surgery is uh, mainly an extension of a minimally invasive surgery so what is minimally invasive surgery minimally invasive surgery means you give smaller holes on the abdomen and then do surgery mm -hmm. so if you uh, do surgery with smaller holes then the patient will have less pain he will be able to walk early the recovery will be smooth he will be discharged early right mm -hmm. so if we are doing minimally invasive surgery minimally invasive surgery can be done by two ways either laparoscopic surgery or robotic surgery robotic surgery is a latest system to do surgery it is not that the robot is doing the surgery it is a surgeon only who is performing the surgery but the robot system is helping the surgeon do the surgery in a better and a precise way what are the advantages of robotic over laparoscopy it has a 3d camera right 3d camera with depth perception it feels like you are sitting inside and performing the surgery right you are very close to the organ you are removing only the organ which is affected by cancer and you are preserving all the structures which are important for a healthy life right if i cause uh, talk about a rectal cancer rectum cancer is uh, it is very closely associated with important nerves autonomic nerves which will control the urinary and the sexual function of the patient so if we damage that then this patient tend to have urinary and sexual dysfunction in the post operative period but with robotic technique we are able to see clearly we are able to preserve the nerves and these patients tend to have very good functional outcome post operatively and in pelvic surgery it is a game changer right in pelvis surgery uh, the space is very less especially in male pelvis the space is very very less when you have to do cancer surgery uh, we sometimes struggles when we are doing a open surgery or a laparoscopic surgery the robotic surgery the camera is long the instruments are long and the movement of the instruments is also like this right 
they can rest so mm-hmm. it is basically doing a open surgery by minimal invasive approach and in the pelvis you can reach very very down into the deeper pelvises do your surgery and come back by just removing the tumor and, and preserving all the important structures so robotic surgery is definitely a game changer it is only removing the cancer it is preserving all the important structures like important is if i give an example of rectal cancer majority of our patients when when they are young they will avoid doing surgery when we offer them a permanent stoma bag it's a colostomy bag which collects the feces outside sometimes we have to give them if the disease is very very low but if we are doing robotic surgery then we can offer them sphincter preserving approach in which we are not giving them a permanent stoma and preserving their function of the rectum so that is just an example of it it is useful in many many diseases like esophagus pore pipe cancer where we have to de- do that surgery in the thorax also abdomen also neck also so when we do by robotic surgery these patients tend to have very less complications in the post operative period if we give them a big incision on the chest then they have pulmonary complication they have pneumonias and all so but if we do that with minimal invasive or robotic approach these patients tend to have a better post operative outcomes and they can start their adjuvant treatment also suppose some patients require say adjuvant chemotherapy adjuvant radiotherapy so they can finish their surgery get recovery early and start their chemotherapies and radiotherapies if it's required you yeah, actually rightly mentioned that it actually makes the uh, the proposed surgery also uh, easier for patients and for doctors also it is really a helper it's not going to replace doctors in any way yes uh, uh, so that but of course you know that surgical surgical oncology is not just about the procedure itself multicus multidisciplinary collaboration plays a huge role too So, what are the best practices for integrating surgical, medical, and radiation oncology perspectives into treatment planning? So, uh, as I was uh, trained in Tata Memorial Hospital, Mumbai, it is the best mm-hmm. cancer t- center in the country and in the world also. So, there we were told and taught that we have to have a multidisciplinary approach, right? Yeah. Only that surgeon or a radiation oncology or a medical oncologist alone cannot treat the cancer. Okay, they have mm-hmm. to. come together form a team and have a comprehensive setup then only we can treat the patients better so we at fortis cancer hospital mohali are also following that approach we have a tumor board approach every patient who comes to us for the first time we will assess them we'll diagnose them we we'll form a stage for them and then the plan is made in that meeting right we have inputs from the radiation oncology we we'll have input from the medical oncologists we we'll have input from the pathologist radiologist nuclear medicine physician everyone will give their inputs and then we'll look at the evidence also so those the guidelines is saying this mm-hmm. then we'll discuss on that and then we'll formulate a plan for the patient so it is important that every person is giving their inputs then only we can give the best survival to the patient so especially in gastrointestinal cancers it is usually suppose a rectal cancer is there we have to give radiation first then do surgery sometimes we give radiation first sometimes we do surgery first then give chemotherapy so that decision making is very very important so everyone will give their input we will discuss it together and then we formulate a plan for the best outcome of the patient fortis cancer institute has a comprehensive cancer setup we have all facilities available like we have talked about robotic surgery we have the latest medical oncologist immunotherapies also we have radiation technologies latest radiation machine also available we have the pet scan we have, everything is under one roof so patient does not have to wonder here and there he can get his treatment at a comprehensive cancer center that is very very important for the patient the message should go across whenever the patient is diagnosed with a cancer he should only get the treatment at a center which is comprehensive all the facilities are available under one roof then only the outcomes will be better for the patient yeah that is actually uh, i think holistic approach is key from like pre treatment for two treatment to post surgery as well i think that is really important for it is like patient. hand holding for the patient Correct. right you have to yes. hold the hand of the patient whenever someone is diagnosed with cancer it is not only the patient who is affected the mm-hmm. whole family is affected their whole psyche uh, gets affected they feel depressed they need some help so we mm-hmm. uh, as clinician can only help them not only get their treatment we can ha- hand hand hold them and uh take it uh, through their journey uh, with successful outcome correct correct rightly mentioned doctor 
like for uh, finally you know for young surgeons looking to specialize in uh, gi oncology i'm sure they'd love to hear your advice so what advice would you give to uh, young surgeons and oncologists looking to specialize in gi oncology so uh, being a gi cancer surgeon i would uh, say them it's a fantastic branch and uh, uh, we uh, face a lot of challenges uh, there is a challenge in decision making uh surgical treatment the surgeries are more extensive they are more challenging and post operative outcome is also important uh, as compared to other specialties the complication rates are also higher so my advice to all the junior colleague uh, surgeons who are aspiring to be gi cancer surgeon is get trained very well okay before you jump on to uh, going into individual practice or a uh, job uh, get yourself trained in all the uh, latest uh, technologies plus work at a center which is giving you a lot of uh, experience in terms of a lot of patients you are observing a lot of patients you are getting to hands on uh, get trained under a mentor uh, like i was uh, fortunate enough to be trained under dr avni saklani who is the best colorectal cancer surgeon in the country in the world we can say under dr sankit mehta he is the best uh, hypex surgeon in the country so i have invested a lot of time there before jumping on because when i was joining here as an individual consultant there is a lot of responsibility on my shoulders that i have to give them the same treatment options as i was getting the patients were getting in mumbai or a uh, best cancer center in the country so i am proud to say that we have been able to offer that here so it is only possible because i was trained by such mentors and i still follow them i keep on uh, taking advice from them and that is the mantra to success so learning never stops keep learning uh, get yourself uh, a good mentor and uh, then only uh, uh, progress towards yeah. this field Thank right you. i think that's an invaluable advice for aspiring oncologist doctor and as we wrap up today's session thank you so much for sharing your expertise and insights on uh this topic and it has actually given a deep dive into the ever evolving world of surgical oncology so thank you so much for sharing uh, thank you hathvi and thank you for having me here and i, I hope uh, this podcast will serve uh, better for information spreading awareness towards the latest technologies available for uh, surgical oncology yeah definitely and to our listeners thank you for tuning into this episode and remember if you are a healthcare professional who is eager to delve deeper into medical topics or have questions do not hesitate to join us on the medsynapse platform medsynapse platform is not just a resource it's a dynamic space where you can connect with your medical peers participate in meaningful discussions and contribute to the ongoing evolution of healthcare so until we meet again stay informed and stay inspired